All right, so in this exercise, they give you an array of numbers and they give you a ratio R and they ask you to count the number of triples in this, of the numbers in this array, which form a geometric progression of ratio R. So it sort of goes to an example here. So one times four is four and four times, so R is four, one times four is four, four times four is 16. So that gives us one geometric progression of length three, and then four times four is 16, and 16 times four is 64. So that gives us another. And so we would have two um, triplets in this particular um, scenario. Um, and of course, the constraints are that, um, the number of integers and the ratio R can be very large. So um, you need to make sure that your code doesn't time out. And so of course this is the dictionary section so we wanna use dictionaries. Um, so this is a little weird. I went and I tried to come up with a solution and I got a solution that I think should work, um, but it gave me some issues um, in the um, when implementing in Hacker Rank. And I'll talk about that a little bit, but um, let me go ahead and um, use the code. Um, again, this is another one that I went to the discussion section um, to get the code for. So basically, here's the idea of what we're going to do. Um, we're going to keep track of two things, so count is zero. We're going to have a dictionary of how many times each integer in the array appears. But we're also going to have an additional dictionary which tells us how many pairs we have. So how many um, pairs of numbers we have A comma B where um, A and B are both integers in the array and B is R times A. And we're going to use these two dictionaries to do our counting. Um, so for I in reversed all right, so basically what we're going to do is we're taking this array of integers and we're counting backwards um, from the largest one. And the reason that we're doing this is because um, basically, here, let, let, let's, let's just sort of write out what we're doing. So if, um, now the first thing you'd think that maybe we do is, okay, so let's set the dictionary value of i to be, um, so ba basically um, i is some integer in the array. Let's have a dictionary, so our dictionary, which keeps track of how many times each integer appears in the array, let's increase that value by one. Um, Actually, now that we're, now that I'm looking at it, um, no, we can't do that yet. And there's a reason why. Um, let me, let me write it out first. So first we want, want to figure out if how many, like, so this integer that we're looking at, this integer i, has, does this complete a triplet? And it completes a triplet if i times r is in dict pairs, because dictionary pairs is, it consists of um, triplets of, or it consists of pairs of the form a and a times r. So if i times r is in dictionary pairs, and that means that um, i times r and i times r times r are both in dic 
that pair is in dictionary pairs. Um, and so how many, however many pairs of the form i times r comma i times r squared, however many pairs of that form exist, we add those to our count because each of those pairs fo now forms a triplet with i. So count plus or equals dictionary pairs i times r. So basically, again, what we're saying is for, for each occurrence, um, dictionary pairs i times r tells us how many times the pair i times r comma i times r squared appears in the indices that we've already um, that we've already looked at. And so we increase the count by that value because all of those pairs now form a triplet with i. So we have i, i times r, i times r squared. Okay, so that's how we count how many new pairs that have just been formed. Um, in addition to forming new pairs, um, or in, in, in a, that's how many new triplets we formed, that we're counting the number of new triplets that have been found, that have been formed with this new integer i. Um, in addition to forming new triplets, this integer i could also be used in forming new pairs. So if i, if I times r is in the dictionary itself, then i comma i times r forms a pair and it belongs in dictionary pairs and the number of times it belongs in dictionary pairs is going to be equal to um well for each instance of i times r we get a new pair and so we're going to um, set dictionary pairs for i if it doesn't exist already, so basically we're going to take the, the value and increase it by, I, we're going to take the value of dictionary pairs i, and if it exists, if it, this just defines the dictionary entry in case it doesn't exist yet. Um, and it sets the default value to zero. Um, and then once it exists, we're going to increase it by however many occurrences of i times r already exist. All right, and so we can sort of see here why we needed to do i times r in dictionary pairs before i times r in dictionary. Because if we do this part first, then we're going to increase dictionary pairs i. Um, and this actually comes into account, um, if i equals i times r, which is the case when r equals 1. That's one of the other things about this problem, is that, um, when, uh, one of the tricks for this problem is in a lot of the cases that, in the test cases that they give you, r will be at least 2. And I sort of blindly assumed that r would be at least 2 when I was writing it the first time. Um, but r can be equal to 1, and your code needs to be able to consider that. Um, and so there are some ways that you can write this code in which you deal with the case of r equals 1 separately. That's in fact the way that I did it when I was writing this up myself. Um, however, this code allows you to deal with um, the case of r equals 1 at the same time. Um, you just need to be careful about the order that you do things in. Um, so here, if you, um, if you, it, for r equals 1, if you did this first, then you would be saying, okay, well, um, this particular um, value i that we're looking at forms a new pair. And then you take that and you form a triplet from it. You're, you, you're sort of reusing i twice. Um, and you're, and so you're double counting, and that's why you need to do this in this order. Um, 
But yeah, so you do that. And now that we've taken care of increasing the diction, increasing um, the count, and then increasing the dictionary pairs, now we can go ahead and do the dictionary value of i is going to be the dictionary value dot get i comma zero plus one, same thing as before. Um, and so, um, so again, the reason that we're doing this here is that um, if we had this at the beginning, then that would cause an issue here if i equals i times r, which is true in the case of r equals one. Um, So yeah, um, and then of course what we do is we return count because this is how we count everything. Um, so basically this, um, so essentially what we're doing here is in, in, in dictionary i, um, we're sort of storing the number of times that i could appear as the final number in a triplet. Um, and then, of course, dictionary pairs i is going to be the number of times that the pair i comma i times r appears, and then you use that to increase your count. Um, so yeah, um, it's a little difficult to wrap your head around, but this is sort of how you would set this up. Um, I do wonder, before I submit this, I want to reorder this and see if this will work in the test cases where r is not equal to one. Yeah, exactly. So if r is not equal to one, then you don't, then um, since i and i times r are always going to be different, you don't need to worry about double counting things um, because you're always going to be referring to different things. However, if we submit this, um, we're going to run into issues uh, with some of these test cases. And in these, look, um, it even tells you, hmm. normally this is locked. I think I actually unlocked this when I was um, debugging, but um, yeah, so this is just a bunch of ones. And so the case of R equals one is different. Um, but yeah, if we go back and we undo all of that, then we can run the code and it works fine. And then we submit the code and it works. Um, so yeah, sort of a difficult thing to get your head around and the fact that you're, so um, part of the reasons why this code is good is that it's sort of, it's short. Um, and I also like the fact that we're um, because we're doing things in reverse order. In, in in some of the in some of these codes, what we did is we we started out by defining a dictionary that had all the information in it, and then we used the dictionary. Here, we're not doing that. We're only defining things in dictionaries as we need them, um, and I think that's useful. It's also using this um, dictionary dot get function. Um, this is sort of, if you remember the thing that we were doing before um, with the dictionary dot set default value and then in increment by one, this sort of does that exact same thing in one line instead of two. So I really like this and I think I'm going to start using this um, in my coding. Um, but the other thing that I was really confused about is um, even though like, of course, you could just go to the discussion section and find um, code that works and then just copy and paste it in here and um, get the correct answer. I really thought that my um, procedure that I was using should work even though like it's um, so I have that written up here it's a lot longer it deals with the case of r equals one separately um, and it uses um, you have to count the number of combinations that you can form um, but this is sort of how I thought it was natural to me to deal with this problem um, and so that's what I ended up doing 
Um, and I ran it, and it worked for some cases, but there were, like, two cases where it didn't work. And I tried debugging this in, um... I tried debugging this in Python. Um, and so I looked, I actually downloaded one of the test cases um, th where it was getting it wrong. And so I went in and I r really looked at this. Um, and so I took my code and the code um, that I got from uh, the comment, the solution that I showed you, and then I used these two codes to figure out what the value actually should be. Because this, um, when when you run the test case, it tells you the expected output, it but um, it doesn't tell you what your output is. Um, so I was like, okay, so what should the answer be? Um, but when running both the codes, I got first of all, I got the same thing for both the code that works. Um, according to the comments, and for my own code. So that seems to check out. But the value is different from the expected output on hacker rank. Um, and so that really confused me, and I have no idea what the issue is with my code. Um, so I feel like there might be other ways to do this problem. But maybe there's just something really wonky about how hacker rank works that sort of prevents you from being able to do it. I'm really not entirely sure. Um, but in any case, given that the solution that I presented is shorter than the one that I wrote um, and it works on hacker rank, that's the one that I would go with. Um, the, the difficulty is that... Um, if you're in like an interview environment, you do want to sort of go like if you have an idea and the idea will work, oftentimes like you just want to go with that um, because you don't want to waste, a, you don't want to spend a lot of time thinking about what is the absolute most optimal way to write the code. Sure, you need to write the code in a way um, where you sort of maximize the efficiency of like um, so that you're using good coding practices and not doing anything redundantly, um, or doing more steps than you need to do. Um, so I guess in that sense, uh, the code that I had come up with, I did define a dictionary separately. Um, and so again, that seems to be a little bit potentially, um, wasteful, uh, because you have to define the dictionary and then run through the values in the dictionary. Um, whereas here you just run through all the values in the array. Um, so I guess my code is a little bit less efficient. Um, but if you get something that can work, um, even if it's a little longer, you want to go with it. Um, so I am curious as to why my code didn't work. There's probably a really simple solution somewhere. Um, but in any, way, in, in any case, the code that I showed you um, appears to be a lot neater and a lot cleaner. Um, and so if you can wrap your head around why it works, then this is the one you want to go with. Um, so yeah, that's sort of a, a tricky problem um, in this section, but that's how you go about solving it.